Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kaylee and these are my books. Today's video is a combo video, a book unhaul, a book shopping vlog, and then a book haul. The video is formatted this way because I asked everyone that follows me on Instagram if they would prefer having two shorter videos or one larger video that kind of shows my unhaul shopping haul process because I typically only unhaul when I'm about to go book shopping. So for me, it makes sense to put it all in one video because this is all one process of me just wanting more books. <laughs> Anytime I go book shopping, I just feel guilty about how many books I currently own, even though I do have a third bookshelf now, so I have some space to work with, but I still like to do a little unhaul before I do a big book haul. You know, when I'm just buying one book, it's it's not a big deal, but spoiler alert, I, I bought I bought a I bought a couple books. <laughs> I bought more than one book today. <laughs> Unfortunately, the footage of me unhauling my books was lost. Luckily, I took a picture of all the books that I unhauled, so I won't have the physical books to show you in this video. Instead, I'll put a picture up on the screen for you to see, but I'm sorry about that. I hope the picture on the screen still works, but there's really nothing I can do. I'm very frustrated that I was talking to nobody for a while because the footage doesn't even exist anymore. And then once we get to the book shopping part, I do have a $50 gift card to Barnes & Noble that I got for Christmas. So that's the motivation behind the book shopping in the first place. And I've just been saving it for a special day, saving it for a rainy day, except it's not raining out. I don't go outside in the rain, so I was actually more more accurately saving it for a sunny day when I'm not afraid to drive but you know what I'm talking about it's I've been saving it for the perfect day and today was the day to spend that $50 at Barnes & Noble but before we get too crazy talking about the book shopping let's first talk about all the books that I unhauled I have already gotten rid of these obviously that's why the footage getting messed up is an issue because they're all already gone. I've gotten rid of them. So to talk you through them, the first book I unhauled was If I Disappear. This is an adult thriller book and I just wasn't a huge fan of this book. I thought the pacing was way off when I read it and therefore why am I gonna hold on to it? I was tempted though because the cover is beautiful. I'm a big sucker for woman's face with plants on her face on the covers and there's actually quite a few books in this unhaul that have this style of cover that I'm quite sad to have gotten rid of but I, I just I can't save on to a book I didn't like just because I think the cover is pretty. I want every single book on my shelf to make me feel happy with the content, not just, ooh, pretty cover. So I did end up unhauling If I Disappear. The next book I unhauled was Just Like Home. This is a book that I thought was okay. There were parts I really liked and there were parts I didn't like. I found the beginning so slow and it just didn't pick up enough for me to overall have a super positive opinion about this book. This is an adult horror book about a woman whose father is a serial killer, but really the focus is on the woman, not the serial killing aspect. There is a really cool aspect to the family home that I haven't seen done in a lot of books, and that was my favorite part of this book. However, it just wasn't a big enough part for me to like it enough to keep it on my shelves. The next book I unhauled was Lesson in Vengeance, and I simply unhauled this book because I ended up somehow with two copies of it. Haven't read it yet. It's a YA dark academia book, so I am a little bit apprehensive because YA fantasy books haven't been working for me lately, but because I own it, I actually owned two copies. I still am going to try it, but I definitely didn't need two copies sitting on my shelves, so I unhauled one of them. The next two books I unhauled were Truth Witch and Wind Witch. I, I had to do that take a million times. I could not get the words and Wind Witch out of my mouth for some reason. But I actually really enjoyed Truth Witch back when it came out and I, I loved it, but that was back when I was really loving YA fantasy. And I never continued on with the series. I had Wind Witch in my collection for so many years and I just ultimately came to the conclusion the other day that I don't think I'm ever gonna revisit Truth Witch. And I'm not really interested in continuing on with the series, even though I did really enjoy it back in the day. There's just too many other series that I'm more interested in, in this at this point in my life, where a YA series that I used to like isn't high up on the list for me to continue. I'd rather continue the series that I'm still currently loving right now, because let me tell you, I am in the middle of so many series. So I might as well unhaul the ones that I don't think I'm ever gonna get to. Next book I'm unhauling is Bringing Down the Duke. This is a 
historical romance, adult historical romance. Actually, it was my first historical romance. And I'm sad to say, I think I peaked in my first historical romance because I did like this one. But all the other historical romances I've been reading since then, that are your typical historical romances. Technically, Sea of Ruin is a historical romance, but it's pirate romance. So I don't know, it's, it's classified differently in my mind. But your more typical historical romances, I have not been a fan of. Um, bringing down the Duke, however, I was a fan of, but I'm just getting rid of it because while I liked it at the time, it's not bringing me any joy sitting on my shelves, just kind of taking up space. So I did want to unhaul it because I did try to continue on in the series as well. Didn't like the other ones in the series. And now I'm wondering if it was just a fluke that I liked it. And if I revisited it, would I even still like this book? I don't know. But ultimately, while I liked it when I read it, I have no current interest in it now. So it didn't need to sit on my shelves. Next book I unhauled is Get Alive Chloe Brown. This book was just okay for me. And again, I just didn't want to keep books on my shelves that were just okay. Also, um, I had the book of the month edition. And so if I'm continuing on in the series and buying the other books in the series, they're not going to match the edition that I had anyways. And so if they're not going to match and I didn't really like the first book, like there's no point for it to be sitting on my shelves. While I didn't love Get Alive Chloe Brown, I also didn't hate it. I gave it about three stars. I am interested in continuing on with the series because people have told me there are quite a few readers out there that thought the first book was just so-so and ended up loving this book two and book three in this trilogy that follows the Brown sisters. Um, this is an adult romance. I don't even know if, if I said that. I think I'm just assuming everyone has heard of this book because it's super popular and really well loved. So I should have liked it. I don't know. I just felt a little bit disconnected from it. I found Chloe a bit annoying to read about, but fingers cross so I like the next books in the series I just didn't need to hold on to this first book especially because it's not even gonna match the next books in the series if I end up buying those next book I unhauled is The Hating Game I read this a while ago this was one of my first adult romances I ever read Hating Game and Red White and Royal Blue I think were the first romances in general let alone adult romances that I ever read and while I enjoyed both of them, um, I liked Hating Game at the time, Red, White, and Royal Blue has stuck with me way more than The Hating Game. And I think The Hating Game is one of those books that I possibly only loved so much when I read it because it was one of the first of its kind within the genre. So what I think I was really loving was the romance genre and not necessarily the specifics within the hating game and so i ended up unhauling it i am thankful for that book for, to opening my eyes to a whole new genre but because my positive feelings with red white and royal blue are still so present and with the hating game i now currently feel a bit indifferent towards i'm thinking it, it's okay to unhaul the hating game next up i'm unhauling horror this is a ya horror book i did like this it was okay like i wanted a lot more from the ending and so because i didn't love it i unhauled it because no need to hold on to it the cover on this one this is another one of those books so that the cover is so beautiful i was tempted i almost like want to just rip off the covers of all these books and put it up on my wall as art pieces but is that blasphemous i don't know <laughs> And so even though I liked Horrid, I didn't love it and it just, it didn't need to be sitting on my shelves. The next two books are a, a pretty much the exact si same situation, Wilder Girls and House of Hollow. And I'm pairing them together because Horrid, Wilder Girls and House of Hollow are all YA horror books that are very focused on atmosphere and vibes. And I, in my opinion, the plot is more in the background. Honestly, the plot and the characters are kind of more in the background and it's more just like creepy vibes, beautiful aesthetics being the focal point of these books, which they that could work for a lot of people. I know a lot of people love these books. I just felt like I liked them, but I didn't love them. The Wilder Girls, I think of this trio was my favorite, but still I didn't love it enough to hold on to it. So I ended up unhauling that. Same situation with House of Hollow. I liked it. This is probably my least favorite of the trio. However, I didn't love it. The cover is so freaking pretty, but I had to get rid of it. And then the last two books I'm unhauling are A Memory Called Empire and A Desolation Called Peace. This is an adult sci-fi duology and I read the first one, A Memory Called Empire, and I was unfortunately kind of bored during it. I think the focal point of these books are the characters and the politics and it felt very localized where I wanted the plot to open up a bit more beyond just this local focal point and I ended up getting a bit bored 
from it because in my opinion none of the characters were compelling enough for me to not need a more exciting plot and so I didn't finish the duology I didn't end up reading the next book because I thought the first book was a bit boring I didn't hate it I think I gave it like 2.5 stars but I just didn't like it enough to continue on so I unhauled both of them all right those are all of the books that I unhauled so now I can go book shopping guilt-free use my $50 Barnes & Noble gift card so I'm going to send you on my journey at Barnes & Noble.
just finished book shopping uh, <laughs> at a $50 gift card. Ended up also spending 50 of my own dollars. Not great, <laughs> not great. Do I regret it though? No. Um, because I got a lot more books than I was anticipating. Sorry, my bag is like crinkling right now. Oh, it just fell. Um, but because I got a lot more books than I was anticipating, I think I'm gonna do the haul back at my apartment because I don't wanna sit in the car and talk to my phone for that long because <laughs> I'm already embarrassed right now. Oh no, a car is behind me, okay. But I'm gonna go, I'll check in once I get back to my house and show you what I bought. All right, welcome back from shopping at Barnes & Noble with me. I'm so excited to share what I got. I ended up getting six books, three of which were fantasies and three of which were horror. It ended up being about $100 total after my membership discount and one of the books was 50% off. So I used my $50 gift card and then I still paid $50 of my own money. Not great, but you know, I'm really excited about all the books I got. So I'm not that disappointed in myself, but let me share what I got so you can be excited about what I got too. I will start with the three horror books that I got. I got these partially with 72 hours in the haunted house in mind, which is a readathon that I am co-hosting in February, where we have 72 hours to spin some wheels, get some prompts, some subgenres to then read as many horror books or thriller books as we can. So while I did have that in mind, these three books I also just have been wanting in general. So if they don't come up during the 72 hours, that's okay. I still really want to read all of these. The first of which is a Darcy Coates book, The Fullcroft Ghosts. I know Cassidy read this and she really liked it. This is a Darcy Coates that I have not read yet. Darcy Coates is one of my favorite horror authors of all time. I think I've read around 10, 11, 12 of her books. I don't know. But unfortunately her books got taken off of Kindle Unlimited so I'm having to buy them now to read them which means I'm going through them a bit slower but I did end up buying this one. I'm not too upset about buying them because I mean these covers are so creepy and beautiful and I'm happy to have them on my shelves and I picked this Darcy Coates out of the myriad of options that my Barnes & Noble had for Darcy Coates because the actual story is quite short. It's only 193 pages, so I thought that would work well for a 72-hour readathon. There are some three short stories in the back too, so there's more pages in this book. It, the actual book is around 280 pages, but the Fullcraft Ghost story is less than 200, which is perfect for a short readathon. This book is about kids, which is very cool because I don't think I've read a Darcy Coates book that focuses on kids before. And it basically is about these kids that get sent away from their house because their mother is hospitalized. So they have to go live with their grandparents at their grandparents' creepy old house. And it seems like that house might be haunted and there's some big family secrets being hidden from them. Sounds like perfect setup to a story and I'm excited to read this soon. The next book I am incredibly incredibly excited for and it is episode 13. This is the Pyramid Book Club which is run by Lexi from Books with Lexi, Michelle from Michelle's Library, and Monica from A Little Bit of Monica. All of their channels will be linked below. This is their choice for their book club in an upcoming month. I'm not sure which month. I want to say March maybe. It's, it's sometime soon, but not currently. And this is a horror book that is told in a found footage format. And I love when books play with the formatting. And this is about a ghost hunting reality show that gets trapped in a mansion and they're potentially finding way too much proof of ghosts than they ever wanted to. I love when books are about reality television shows and I love when, when horror books paranormal books are about finding proof that ghosts exist. One of my favorite horror books of all time, The Carol Hunt by Darcy Coates does that. So I'm hoping for some similar vibes in this book. This is one of like my most anticipated books ever just because of the, the, the pairing of the plot synopsis with the formatting of the book means I may pick this up tonight, who knows. And then the third and last horror book that I picked up is Eric LaRocca's Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke. Again, I thought this might be good for the 72 hour readathon because um, while this book is full length, there's about 300 pages in it. I believe it's a collection of some shorter novellas. Please correct me down in the comments if I'm wrong because this is going to be my first time reading Eric LaRocca's work. But it looks like based off of this table of contents here that there are three novellas slash short stories in here and they 
seem to be fairly short. Like the first one I think is less than 150 pages. Perfect for this shorter readathon. And I've heard so many positive things about Eric LaRocca's writing, how it's weird, creepy, gross horror and things go very dark, which seems fantastic for me. I don't know the synopsis of any of these stories and honestly I don't want to know the synopsis for any of these stories so unfortunately I'm not going to tell you about the books, about the plots, because I don't want to know. It really seems like this is an author that would be best to go in blind when reading the stories. And so that's what I'm going to do. All right, next up are the three fantasy books, the first of which is Blood of the Chosen. I've actually already read this book. I have Ashes of the Sun on the bookshelf behind me. I think it's behind that pot, so you can't see it right now. Um, but I love this series, this book two in the series, first of which is Ashes of the Sun. This is a fantasy series that has some sci-fi elements. I always mention whenever I talk about this book that Rachel has deemed it gay fantasy Star Wars, and I totally agree with that description. The characters in here are so fun to read about. I think this is a very, very approachable fantasy for any reader, meaning this would be a good first fantasy book to try out um, within adult fantasy because it's not too dense to read like the characters are really fun the plot is pretty fast moving it's easy to grip but it's so good that I still would recommend it to fantasy veterans as well so this is book two I just didn't own book two I've already read book two I read it through audiobook and I wanted it to be sitting on my shelves that way I can have the whole trilogy when the book three comes out as I'm saying that I'm actually not even sure if it is a trilogy I know there is a book three but I just don't know if book three is the end in the series I think it's a trilogy but let's put a little asterisk there that uh, it might not be the last book, who knows. But either way, I want all of these books on my shelf, so I had to buy the second book. Next up, I bought this chunker, um, a, The Light of All That Falls. Fortunately, the only copy they have there is a little bit bent in this corner, but that's okay. This is Backlist Book Club's current read right now. We already read book one and book two in this series, and this is the last book in the trilogy. Backlist Book Club is a book club run by Cassidy from Covers with Cassidy and I am a current co-host along with Mel from Eleanor Reads and Bex from Be Witch Bex. All of their channels will be linked in the description box below. You can see behind me that I have The Shadow of Hopeless Lost and An Echo of Things to Come. This finishes out the series. I have been enjoying this series so I'm excited to read this last book but I'm also really nervous because I think I was already supposed to have started it. And this book is long. This is a long, long book. It's over 800 pages and <laughs> it's just a bit intimidating to see. I will be picking this up soon and I just needed the physical even though I do think I will be using the audio to help me through it as well. And then the last book that I picked up is A Cruel and Faded Light. This is the book that was 50% off so this was kind of an impulse buy. I have read the first book in this series, A Dark and a Hollow Star. Um, sorry, the sun is kind of shining right on the book right now. But I read the first book in the series, The Dark and Hollow Star, and I actually loved it. Like, I had such a fun time with it. I really liked the magic system being linked to D&D &D dice and just the randomness of the magic itself. It reminded me of playing D&D. &D. And I liked the world that was built. I liked the relationships that were going on. I liked the murder mystery element in the first book. So I'm excited to read the second book. And I own the first book in hardcover, so it's nice to have another hardcover to match it but it's also nice to get this hardcover at 50% off. Did I even tell you what genre this book is? I mean, it's in the fantasy section, but hi, this is a fantasy book. <laughs> uh, and this book, in my opinion, they kind of toe the line between young adult and adult. And they are urban fantasies. They're set in the real world. There are humans, but then there's also this magic world with fae involved and other creatures and magic like that. Lots of interesting fae politics in here. Basically there's this monster, this force that has been killing humans and people that are half fae, half humans. And so our heroes kind of are coming together to put a stop to this because the fae courts aren't caring. From what I remember of the first book, it gets kind of dark at times, which is why I liked it so much. And honestly, the cover for this second book, I, I actually despise it. Like, I hate this cover so much, which is why I didn't automatically buy it when it first came out, because I was like, ah, I'll get it through the library. I'm okay buying it with when it's pretty cheap, but like, man, this cover looks terrible. <laughs> but because I love the first book, I am excited to read this next book. All right, the sun is in my eyes. I'm sure the lighting is less than ideal right now, so I'm gonna wrap up this video because I just talked you through the six books that I bought. I'm very excited about all of those. Let me know down in the comments 
if you've read any of the books that I bought or if you're also wanting to read any of the books that I bought. And if you enjoyed this video, please like the video and subscribe for more content and I'll see you next time. Bye!